Hi, this is John with Flat Six Motorsports. Today we're going to bring the third installment of Porsche Macan tuning options and we're going to test two piggyback solutions both on acceleration and dyno numbers. Stay tuned. talk about the performance acceleration testing we did. We took several poles and most were pretty consistent within the time. We did a stock run, one with the red chip and one with the race chip. So what we did to control for any loss of traction or a poor launch, we didn't want to do a zero to 60 time uh, because that could fluctuate quite drastically. So we did a 20 to 60 pole and then a 30 to 70 mile an hour pole. And what we did is we hit the accelerator before the recorder uh, started when we passed that either that 20 or 30 mile an hour threshold and then ended when we hit the 60 or 70 mile an hour threshold. So let me just go over stock 20 to 60 miles an hour. The Macan S is a 2017 Macan S ran 4.97 seconds 20 to 60 miles an hour. With the race chip it ran 4.68 seconds and with the red chip 4.51 seconds. So the red chip a clear winner with acceleration testing. Now if we look at 30 to 70, which is going to you know, run the gears out a little longer and probably show more of the tune's ability. Uh, stock from 30 to 70 miles an hour, the Macan S ran 5.52 seconds. With the race chip, it ran 5.03 seconds and the wrench chip ran 30 to 70 miles an hour in 4.61 seconds. So almost a full second off, which is pretty significant for just a tune. Uh, driving impressions. Both of them felt good. Um, you notice the power, especially in the mid range and upper range, you didn't quite notice as much down low. And as we'll show through the dyno, it looks like both lost just a tad bit of power down low. Um, we weren't able to replicate that feeling and uh, I'll talk to that in just a second. completely stock. We did that with three poles to ensure we had the right number. All three were very consistent. And then what we did is we installed the race chip. Now the race chip uses two sensors. Uh, we ran that uh, two times, both identical. 
Uh, interesting enough, there was a loss of power down low in that dyno, and you'll see it in the dyno graphs within our blog post, but let me just explain one thing real quick on a dyno pole. So what you're doing is you're putting it in fourth gear, and you're waiting until you get to about 2,000 RPMs. And then what you're doing is you're, you're stomping on the gas, full throttle, wide open throttle. The engine goes under load and starts boosting up through the turbos, and those kick on. Now, it's great for looking at the tune, the calibration of the tune, the air-fuel ratios, etc. However, it might not be exactly how you're going to drive your vehicle. So that power loss that we saw, it was interesting. It tells us something that the ECU, the factory ECU, is not liking what signals um, both the race ship and wrench ship are trying to send. Um, so it's actually cutting boost is what, is what we think is happening. Um, however, it's not significant. So when you're driving, you're probably going to have a, a, a partial input into a rolling into a full throttle. And with that, it feels smooth, power delivery feels immediate, and the car pulls. So uh, don't be discouraged when you see the dyno plots and thinking when you put this in, oh my God, I'm going to lose so much power down low. And that's you know where I drive quite often and I'm not going to feel the power because what we notice in our, in our testing and just driving around is that A, these things made more power, B, made the car accelerate much faster. And also, it, you felt the power pretty immediately. Um, it was very smooth. There was no jerkiness of the tune. Um, so let's look at the dyno numbers. Uh, first up was the race chip, and we ran that on the seven setting, um, and that put down um, 300. Well, these are corrected numbers. Um, what we did is we calculated based on the percentage increase of what these represented the crank. It put down 10.7 percent more power. Uh, which equates to about 36 more horsepower, taking the Macan S to 376 horsepower. Now, interesting enough that because of the lag of, of torque delivery down low, because it was either cutting boost or doing something, uh, the torque number didn't increase. It matched it kind of through that range um, where the stock uh, Macan makes most of its torque, so we didn't see a torque increase on the dyno. However, on the street, we definitely felt the, the car move faster and the acceleration times backed that. Um, those poles were, were consistent, they read basically identical. Uh, then we moved to the um, REN chip, and let me just say with the raised chip, you have to go inside to change settings. So we, we did some street calibration before, we found that 7 was the best setting, so we went with that, we didn't want to unscrew, we had limited time on the dyno, so we then installed the REN chip. So the REN chip, we put it on setting 6, uh, and we also tried setting 7, there's just a dial on the outside, so we tried uh, two poles each basically identical. So I think that that box is maxed out at, at the six setting and that's where we ran on the street and it felt most comfortable, very smooth power delivery. Now the wrench chip um, increased power by 14.4% over stock, um, which is an additional 49 horsepower taking the Macan S to 389 horsepower. So almost to the numbers that the stock uh, Macan Turbo is. Uh, we also saw uh, about 48 more pound feet, pounds of torque um, through that and it came in a little earlier. You can see the dyno graphs uh, on our website in the blog. Um, we do have some notes about the actual reading of the dyno. Uh, now the Macan is obviously all-wheel drive. Uh, the dyno is a little bit older so what we believe is happening is it was only either measuring the rear wheel con uh, component of the power or something was a little bit off. There were uncorrected numbers. We didn't want to manipulate anything. We just wanted to be transparent and show what it was. So you're gonna see pretty low numbers. Uh, we were quite surprised, but we just didn't have the time to sit and troubleshoot and, and figure out uh, you know, how to correct those. But the, the important thing is these both, like I said, added power as a percentage. And if you look at that, you'll see that. And they also added uh, obviously more power because the car accelerated much faster. Uh, now, if we look at kind of the max power contribution that both made, the race ship added 40 horsepower at about 6,200 RPMs, and the peak horsepower 36 at about 5,830 RPMs. And that, that held strong to Redline. Uh, the REN ship added a max horsepower of 59 at 4,750 uh, RPMs, and that stayed pretty consistent through Redline. It added a peak 49 horsepower at 5,980 RPM. Um, so both, once those turbos spooled up and it moved, it definitely pulled hard and smoothed the Redline. Uh, both felt very good. Uh, like I said, we couldn't recreate that power loss down low in any of our driving, so uh, you know we had limited time. Take it for what it's worth. Uh, we believe that both are a really good option. Um, Cobb's access port, as tested by them, adds about 42 horsepower, so 
that kind of splits the difference between these two tunes and um, obviously with a flash tune you're going to get a little bit better response out of the tune and it's going to uh, deliver torque uh, more rapidly in the low RPM so you're going to feel that so that that's a great thing if you want to have the upfront torque uh, if you want a little more optimized tune Cobb's going to be the way to go now Cobb's going to also add a lot of torque down low if you're concerned about you know the PDK box and the Macon S which some people are we haven't heard or seen of any issues with them but the uh, piggybacks are not going to add a level of torque that's going to really mess with that transmission so maybe the safer if you're concerned about longevity of the gearbox I think both are uh, you know going to be great for just plug and play performance they're going to add about the power you, you want out of, out of the vehicle um, not sure how much further the McConaughey can be pushed without you know a turbo upgrade the turbos are, are spooling quite fast and uh, I'm not sure if you can really dial a lot more power at them without upgrading the turbos. Seems that it's, it's running out of juice up top. Um, and uh, like I said, uh, you know, in the words of the, the dyno operator, uh, he said that the rent ship for almost half the price of the Cobb access port is well worth it. And, and that's kind of our take. If you're, if you're looking for the most optimal tune, flash tuning is going to be the way to go. Um, Cobb's access port is hands down the best solution for flash shooting. And in the piggybacks, we think that uh, really race chip and wrench chip are both quality products. Uh, we found that wrench chip added a little more power and better acceleration numbers. So we're going to pick wrench chip as our uh, number one piggyback system for the Macan S. So that's what we would recommend at this point uh, based on the data, based on the feel and the calibration. Uh, the hardware, you know, both pretty similar, both high quality products. Uh, very impressed with the both of them. Um, but the wrench ship is going to win this battle of the piggyback uh, dino wars. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at flat6motorsports.com. And again, please check out our website at flat6motorsports.com and look in the blog. We have tons of uh, photography and um, the uh, actual dino plots for you to look at and uh, specifically see where some of that power loss down low is recording on the dyno.